In this video I explain to you how to implement the Profibus board QJ71 PB93 from Mitsubishi in a uh, System Q PLC. Hello, welcome back. This is Gerd Zeller from Zeller Press Control System and here is how it goes. In order to implement this board, you first need to install the program GX Configurator DP, which is uh, available for purchase at Mitsubishi, at your local Mitsubishi dealer. Once you got this program installed, you will be able to implement this board very easy. And in order to do this, you will go over here to the uh, PLC parameter select the I.O. assignment, drop down all the way to your end of your I.O. assignment to the first empty slot, which will be in my case uh, slot number 12. Mark this, push this button right here on the right side. New module and here you can select the Profibus DP module down here and then you need to select the correct module itself which in this case is this one right here the OJ 71 PB 93D this goes to the specific to the specific address 230 which is in hexadecimal and then just click OK and confirm this again and then you will see it's been added on right here in this intelligent module in this intelligent function module area right here and if you want to check if everything is okay, you just go down here on this check button. And if there is no error, just push end and then you are all set to go. And another way to implement this module is to make a right click on this area right here in the intelligent function module and push the button new module and then the same window opens again and it's pre-selected already from the previous um, selection. The Profibus module QJ71 PB93D and this will automatically be put on the address 250 hex and if I do this you will see it will appear right here. Now you need some inputs and outputs to control the card. And this can actually be seen on these two small documents that I provide here. And I will to put these two documents at the end of the video. And here you can see the signals going from the board to the CPU. That's the actual status of the board. And here is the area from the CPU to the board, which controls the board. And here you can see the buffer memories where all your data are stored. And another thing is if you do not have this document handy, it will be very easy because you can just go ahead and go to your module that we first put in with the address number 230 and make a right click on there and then you can register this to your intelligent function module monitor. Click this, you will see all your addresses already being provided right here. And this way you do not need to check which is my address x00 because your address x00 needs to be added on to the 230. If you do not want to make all these calculations, you can go ahead and just see this on here. You got your uh, watchdog, your communication signal that communication works and so on. And then you got the outputs for the control being displayed right here. And this is always the actual address that you need to program in your logic. And then you got some um, all your buffer memories that that is described right here in this um, document. But you can see it also on here. If your module is added on to the intelligent module area go ahead and open this folder right here and click the parameter and on the parameter you can actually uh, make some adjustments or some settings on the slave 
which means you have to put in your um, start address from 0 to 125. If you got that done, click on continue and check on the auto refresh and also the consistent data and put a length in of the words that need to be uh, sent and received. In my case, it is 62. Send and receive and then you're all set. And this down here you will not need as far as I know because we're not gonna make this in the program. And then just push finish and then you're all set with this setting. Now you have to write some code in order to get this board to work correctly. So first of all, um, you need to send a station number to this board. And then you need to, in order to do this, you have to move your station number that you actually want to use. You have to double check that with your master on the other side of the bus. And then uh, in this case, it is just the number three. And this you need to move to the G, to the buffer memory G515. You can see this right here. Station number change request U23 G515, which is right here. And also the boat rate will be written in here. And there is also a hex code which provides you the right board rate, which I will also put at the end of the video. And this is for that. And the next thing is, once you got this, um, yeah, and then you need to set the Y243, which is the control for the request. This, that's that one, station number request signal. That's that one right here. The next thing will be that you get a return from the module that the station number change is completed, which is the 24.3, always in hex code. Once you got this, you can move the actual address to any register in your PLC, which I only made to have it uh, controlled later on in a, in a visualization and so on. And then you reset the request output. And that's it for the initialization of the board itself. And in order to set up the communication um, right here. First of all, you have to you want to use all this uh, prefix right here that you have no error that the the module is communicating is no communication error and your module is ready for communication and then once you got this all true first of all you initialize the output data going to the other machine and put all the zero in there and I also provide the byte swapping um, function on here because I, I send this data to a um, Siemens PLC and for this we have to swap the bytes inside the world. And then you have to also set a bit where you actually enable the output being active and once you got this then you put your uh, output active right here you put your prefix again on here and then you program the y is zero which is the input data being refreshed that means the input data being sent to the master module 
that means the input of the master module is being sent. It's a little bit, for me, it's a little bit different because I would say this is an output, but anyway, it's the input data that being received by the master. And this is actually the output from the DP module to the DP bus master. And once this is done, then you can go ahead and write the output of the uh, on, uh, write your outputs using any register and starting from the U23, which is your, your address again. And your G256 is your first word writing data to the master, which you can see right here, input send area used to set input data to be sent to the master station. That's starting at the buffer memory 256. Yeah, I just wrote, uh, this is just one word length. And then here I just made another register with six words length. This you can choose to your needs. And also later here is the reading from the other machine which you also need to put in this prefix again here and then move the data from the board number 23 from the G0, which is the output received data. This is the output received from the master station to your side of the Mitsubishi. And this little program right here, I just made in order to see if I receive data and if I can send data again to the other PLC and then I can see what once I set this bit in the PLC I can see the receiving bit turning on. Yeah and like I said as follow I will provide this uh, little documentation for you and you can just slowly read this and I say thank you for watching and I would appreciate if you would subscribe my channel and I say bye bye until the next video. Thank you for watching. And this was the explanation how a Profibus DP module QJ71PB93 is inserted in a System Q PLC from Mitsubishi.